he's back. Mato, and I say he's back because he's also back on your telly calling the Sydney Sevens this weekend. Congratulations on getting the call up. Uh, exactly. I haven't called footy for about three years, mate. I'm, uh, I'm a little bit nervous, to tell you the truth, mainly because there's 210 players who I never met before and I probably won't ever see again in my life. That's who I've got to commentate. Normally, when you commentate footy, you know each one of the players intimately. But uh, no, this sevens. I love sevens, so it should be. It'll be me just going stupid. Yeah, no. I just want to just explain this to the to the audience fully. Okay, you have a stale, pale male. You have a white man over the age of fifty years old being reemployed yeah. to call rugby. I tell you what. New Zealand has now gone into apoplexy, mate. Uh, Twitter has gone off. People are being cancelled all over the place. What kind of sexist, racist, misogynist pig made that decision, Greg? He was a Kiwi. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, be- I'm being re-employed. If anyone doesn't know, the reason I don't call footy anymore is because they changed from Fox Sports to a thing called Stan in Australia and they wanted to reinvent themselves and la, 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 and they got rid of all the pasty-faced people. But this is a Kiwi, runs World Rugby's rugby program. And he said, I love you, mate. Come and work for me. So we'll see if he loves me after Sunday, after I call three days of seven. So <laughs> geez, I'll, tell you what, I'll tell you what isn't good, uh, Martin. I don't know what sort of shape you're in. Oh, please, mate. But, I'm a uh, flabby guy, mate. I'm staying in the same hotel as the sevens players, some of the most, world's most supreme athletes. And uh, I wish they'd put some clothes on because it's not good for the embarrassment and humiliation. Oh, God. I said anyway, on, so I was, the sevens is on and you guys will probably win. I sat on the GC for a week uh, and, you, you know, you had, I, I, I went to a place called the La Luna Beach Club, okay? Now, the La Luna Beach Club, two things about it. They had a sign beside the toilet which says uh, maximum of two people allowed in the toilet at one time. <laughs> now, yeah. I thought, okay, right. well, let, all right, okay, well, so what? Do, what, yeah, what goes on in there? Uh, the other one was the bronze... T- <laughs> tattooed boys, muscled boys who are lolling about the pool, sipping cocktails and stuff like that. You know, you just, you look at it and you just think, I just, I mean, I, I, I can't exist in this place, Greg. I need to, I, it's, it's not for me. It's good for our skin, though, because I no longer take my shirt off. Um, so in terms of cancer, skin cancer, it's, it's excellent. That's about it. O- Aussie Open Tennis. Uh, we got the the women's final all decided, and that is two players of no origin because you aren't allowed to talk about their origin. One of them now plays for Kazakhstan, and the others got that white flag thing going on. How utterly yep. stupid is this, mate? I mean, okay, as soon as you see that there's no flag, you know that, oh, they're playing for that country. Playing for that country, they called Russia. Yeah. Um, and uh, there goes, I don't know if you've seen the whole story, there goes Novak Djokovic's father to hang around with the Russian protesters, which is a great, great vision as well. Oh, mate. Do you guys care about the Aussie Open? Yeah, Surely. we love it. Yeah, we love it. We love it because it's a great time zone here in New Zealand. I mean, if you're old school and like your tennis, I mean, I grew up with the Grand Slams, mate. I absolutely love it. I, you know, I wish that somebody would actually go back to the grass court because I always like that. I, I mean, I'm, I'm such an old man these days. I'm not a big fan of the kaleidoscope outfits and everything else. And I tell you what, I'm such a radical. I've just done an article for NBR this week. End the slave yeah. labour and the bloody exploitation and start paying the kids who you get to work 12 hours a day chasing balls around. Come on, pay a what minimum the, wage. What about the what about the kiddies who went until 4 a.m. Uh, yeah. Melbourne time the other night? Yeah. Like... Uh, they're getting, I think they get a pair of shoes or something yeah, for their trouble. That's it. Uh, anyway, uh, um, she's big money. No, I don't mind watching it, but um, we've got a couple in the doubles. That's about it. Okay. Well, the four men semi finalists, you've got a guy with no flag against uh, the Greek Slezo Sitsipas. I mean, his effort the other day to try and get a date with Margot Robbie post match was just. Oh, rip- mate. Come on, dude. Mate, he's trying to get a date with anyone. He promised if he wins, he'll build a school in, in Melbourne. So, <laughs> oh, some bird will come up. Jeez, some blokes will do anything, won't they? Anything. Oh, grow my hand. Yeah, the other side of the draw is Novak against the guy that everyone will remember as the guy who lost to Novak. So it's still Novak's to lose. All right. Um, yeah. Stephen Moore, we talked about Eddie Jones, mate, last week. Stephen Moore's come out and saying, oh, I don't think he's the right guy. Has anyone given any, any props or cred to this? Yeah, I saw the story, mate. Actually, I was with him. It was his 40th birthday the other day. Um, yeah, but he was more saying, well... I think he was more saying that Dave Rennie might have been on the right track. Now, Dave Rennie was apparently on the right track culturally, but unfortunately, the game isn't about culture. It's about winning football matches, and that's where Eddie comes in. I don't think there's anyone in Australia 
who doesn't get, who, well, there's not many people in Australia that uh, don't go, well, we had to do something, we had to try something, and we've seen it before at World Cups. So you change the coach, you can change your fortunes overnight almost. Um, but everyone knows Eddie ain't a long-term solution. But somehow he had Australia rugby over the barrel and said, if you want me, you're going to have me for five years. So that's what we've got. There's some um, Wallaby squad members are a little bit scared because they hear these stories of Eddie Jones, but they haven't seen him. He hasn't been seen in Australia for a while, and I keep telling stories, and they go, oh, well, I think some of their parents have booked trips to the World Cup who may not be, uh, their sons may not be going. Ah, we call this, the old school rugby fan calls this, the Greg Martin in 1991, mate. Oh, sorry. Yeah, I know. Oh, sorry, mate. Mate. So I know, I know what they're feeling, but they are, <laughs> are you allowed to say, shitting themselves. So there were 51 Wallabies used last year. Wow. And I tell you what, a lot of them won't be going, and uh, and they know it. And then they're going, oh, I see. You've got to really put in. You can't just be a, a, a soft ass. So that's where Australian rugby is, mate. And Eddie's, I think Eddie's arriving maybe today or tomorrow. So the whips will start cracking very shortly. I'd be more worried, Greg Martin with his Triple M breakfast host out of Breeze, I'd be more worried actually if I was an assistant coach because what you said last week is that you win a test match, you obviously have a couple of bibers to celebrate afterwards, you set the alarm for 4am, you've got a meeting at 5 and a gym session at 5.30 or something stupid, isn't it? Oh, no, he'll peel them off. Well, there's nothing, well, the last thing you know that happens in every organisation, as soon as a new coach comes in, new strength and conditioning guy, new persistent coach, new defence coach, because they don't want to inherit um, rubbish that other people have handled. So, and they uh, they want to put their own stamp on absolutely everything. They're like a dog who goes into a new territory. They've got to wee as high as they can on every tree. So there's a lot of similarities between rugby coaches and dogs, and male dogs. All right, there were finally, and this is just absolute genius from New Zealand rugby, uh, you know, the most flawed business model in the world. So what they've just decided to do now, mate, is they've decided that the All Blacks, and uh, no All Black is allowed to play more than five Super Rugby matches in a row before they're rested and rotated. And even if you get on the field for one minute, that counts as a match. So you look at the NRL where they play 26 competition matches and have origin thrown in and test matches. and You look at the NFL. You look at any other sport in the world. What other sport in the world or what other country in the world would do this and say, no, you're not I, actually allowed to play? Hold on. Didn't you, haven't, we, haven't we been down this track with Australia, with New Zealand rugby before? Yes. Can yeah. you remind me? 2007. 2007, rest and rotation. Graham Henry's brilliant idea that yeah, the All Blacks right. would actually play rugby in the gym. That didn't work. I mean, okay, 2011, we, we threw oh, it out. Wait, wait, wait. I, I'm, not, I'm not a library. I can't remember everything. What happened in 2007? Well, um, I, think we, you did it. I think we went to the quarterfinal uh, against France with a lot of right. confidence. And, that's right. Yes. And, and got defeated on the same day that we got defeated by England. Yes, um, yes. 2019, so 2019, we tried this again, resting the players because it's World Cup year. Did that work in 2019? I can't remember no, everything. No, I it think it did. No. And also last okay. year we thought it was a good idea to do it as well. And last year we had the most successful All Black. No, we didn't, did we? We no, we were quite shit. No, had most a of it. shit season. Yeah. Um. Yeah. Anyway. <laughs> I mean, mate, can you believe this, though? I mean, these are players, by definition, you're meant to play, aren't you? And also, in all seriousness, Greg, you know, the beloved Jerry Collins, RIP, he used to play rugby on a Saturday, Super Rugby or whatever, then he, under a false name, would go and play league on the Sunday. I mean, some play play, league, yeah. some exactly. players just want to play. Why can't you just individualise this and go, do you want to play? Instead, we've got sports scientists getting their calculators out. Oh, no, 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 the, the percentages say. It's just ludicrous, isn't it? Have you heard the story? What happened to training? There's some of these uh, some of these high performance guys will run onto the field because they've all got they've all got the um, kilometre trackers. They've all got the run running trackers on them now at training, and they say stop, 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 stop. He's got to stop running now. He's run enough at uh, at ninety five percent capacity. Ah, oh, uh, good God, yes, good. Yeah. Okay, well you've just well, remember get... what it was about passing, running, catching, and tackling. The game used to be about. Yeah, and 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 it's and it's radically changed so much now that it's not about. Yeah, it just you sit here and you scratch your head. The only thing I can say, New Zealand rugby, is around about October in the quarter of the semi, I'll be ringing you and saying I told you so. If it was actually about high performance, you just scout all the CrossFit gyms for those wankers and uh, and teach them how to catch a footy. But that's not what it's about. It's about instinct. It's about anyway. 
don't give a star. That's you always do this. You paint me into a corner where I get angry. 